Abidin السلام, notices that that lecturer Yazid has hired has just attacked Imam Ali and Imam Al Hussein السلام, for a long period of time. So what does Imam Zain al-Abidin do? He stands up and he begins with his own sermon. Let us tonight look at what are the salient points that we can take from what I call one of the bravest sermons in the history of Islam. Because in reality, he should have been killed after this sermon. And even Yazid himself, when he saw him stand up, said that I know this will one day bring my downfall, allowing him to speak. Let's look at the salient points that emerge. The first thing Imam Zain al-Abidin salam does is that he doesn't show any disrespect in the arena. Meaning that he doesn't get up and say, I'm just going to speak. No, he said, if you give me permission, allow me to speak. And I am going to show you the aim of what is a majlis. What does he say? I want to say some words which are what? Lillahi fihi radan. These words are going to bring the pleasure of Allah. And ajr And for those who are in the congregation, they're going to get rewards and they're going to get gifts because they're attending the congregation. From here, Imam has made something clear. That whenever a majlis is done in honor of Al Muhammad, these have to be the two aims. For both the one organizing and the one sitting in the majlis. The one, the one who is giving the lecture, his ultimate aim, Imam Zain al-Abdin says, is what? Lillahi fihi ridan. That it has to be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know, I can end up being someone who gives majalis. And the whole aim of me giving majalis is purely what? Is because my father gives lectures. His dad gives lectures. His granddad gives lectures. His great granddad gives lectures. It becomes a family business in reality. It really becomes a family business because you're a, a, a high school dropout in some cases. And not to say that there's anything wrong with being a high school dropout. On the contrary, there are people who are high school dropouts who became multimillionaires. There are people who are high school dropouts who themselves, for example, Allah opened other doors of risk. There are people who are high school dropouts because their parents were in trouble. But the high school dropout who himself is what? Himself is someone, the ghetto, from the rubbish of the people. And then what does he decide? He decides that what I'll do is I'll give majalis. Why? Because it's a family affair. It's a family business. Dad's done it. Granddad's done it. His granddad's done it. His granddad's done it. What am I going to achieve? If I now give majalis, people will kiss my hand when... I give majalis because I'm someone who sits on mambar. So that means already, even if I have zero ilm, people will kiss my hand. It's like if I bring you someone who looks religious now, and I sit him in your house, will you even have a clue if he's knowledgeable or not? And straight away, you'll see him, Mawlana, salamu alaikum, and so on. Why? Because you, on the ground, have respect for the one who sits on mambar al Hussein. Do, do you agree? But when a person themselves enters this, and their niyyah is what? That I've not achieved anything in life. I've not studied anything. And you know what? Not only is this in the family, but there's good profit to be made from sitting on here. Yes. Why? Because I could sit on here and people could give me gifts for sitting on here. And then I can open institutions while I'm sitting on here. So therefore, it's actually something very good. I should give majalis because there's a good amount of income also coming in from here. Number three, because I believe I have a God-given right to give majalis. We are families who have a God-given right that we have always been known, and therefore we are the ones who will continue to give these majalis. That person also sees that majalis al Hussein bring you fame. You can have a big following with Majalis al Hussein. Wherever you go in the world, you can have hundreds of thousands following you on Facebook, hundreds of thousands following you on Instagram and on Twitter and on Snapchat. You can have people saying that you're great and so on. So, what happens is why not take this? Look at this. The limelight with this is something unreal. Imam Zain al Abideen in front of Yazid, while Yazid is, say, is sitting, said the aim of this that I'm about to say is it brings pleasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is a majlis. Lillahi fihi ridan. 
that as long as this brings pleasure to Allah, then that's the aim of the lecture that I'm giving. Because one of the main areas in which you could be disturbed or affected by shaitan is sitting where I'm sitting right now. Believe you me. Why? Because it can build an arrogance in you. An arrogance where you feel that people are not worthy of talking to you. People are not worthy of sitting with you. You begin to act rudely with people who organize majalis. You actually begin to think of yourself as something big. The reality is I could give 5,000, 10,000 majalis before I die. Believe you me, none of it is in reality going to raise my status because there's only one Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. I'll die, I'll go under the ground, but Imam al Hussein's name remains the highest. You coming up here thinking that this mumbar is all about you. It's not about you. Lillahi fi radhan. There is a pleasure in serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as what I'm doing is for the pleasure of Allah. That's why even when you give majalis, even if someone attacks you and says you're this, you're that, as long as you know that your niña is to serve Allah, whatever arrows are thrown, you're not worried. The ones who get angry quickly are the ones who looked for fame doing this and now find there's no fame coming to them. Whereas those of us who were street from back in the day, Allah opens all the doors for us. So what you have is on the one hand, Lillahi fihi radan, on the one hand, then what? Lihaulail julasa. Those who are sitting, what is their ajr and thawab? For those who are sitting, there is great reward and great gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times do you see in our communities today, there are people who don't realize the greatness of sitting in Majlis al Hussein alayhi salam. Many don't realize until COVID came. When COVID came, do you know what a blessing it was? Because normally there are those who may fall into a habit that I won't come to a majlis the whole year until 10 nights of Muharram. Now where's the majlis in the 10 nights? Now all of a sudden there's an emptiness because now Muharram and Safar, we were used to majlis all the time. There were people who were thinking that they were doing a favor coming to majlis. On the contrary, you were entering the banquet of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe you me, you're entering a banquet. Do you think that me... Making up the numbers for Majlis al Hussein makes me special. I'm honored to be associated with Aba Abdullah. It's an honor for me that I come to a place. How many places on this earth do you come? There are many who look for freebies. If they go to an exhibition, they go to a conference, they look for a freebie where you get a couple of gifts at the end. In this one, you don't just get gifts, Ajr and Thawab, non stop. We're going to reward you. Why? Why? Because you sat in Majlis al Hussein alayhi salam and you heard the words of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and you heard Masaib al Hussein alayhi salam. Do you know what we will do for you? We'll reward you. We'll let angels be your servants because you shed a tear for Sayyid al Shuhada. Imam therefore says in front of the court of Yazid, Who are Who are they? Many of them were haters of Ahl al Bayt. But Imam was saying, you know, for you people, even you people sitting in a majlis, you may hate us, but you don't know. Just sitting here has already bought you thawab. And there is already ajr for you people of Sham without realizing that you're sitting in majlis al Hussein alayhi salam. Never should we therefore take it for granted. Because when we fall into that trap, I'll go when it's Muharram, I'll go when it's Shah Ramadan. No, 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 no. Whenever you know there's a majlis, and don't fall into this trap, by the way, of going to a majlis on the basis of which marja you follow. Baba, go wherever there's majalis al Hussein alayhi salam. Unfortunately, even in London, how many different mosques we split into because of which marja we follow, we go to that mosque. Wherever there's a majlis of Imam, there is ajr and thawab. I go there not because of my political rivalries or who my best friends are. I go there to learn about what Ahl al-Bayt left behind. Thank you.